Hello everyone, and in this video, we're gonna be walking through how you can set up a managed relational database for free on the AWS free tier, and we will get started. So I'm at the AWS Management Console right now. I'm gonna type in RDS, and we're gonna view the RDS dashboard. So give this thing a second to load. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on Create Database. And it's gonna take us to a page where we can choose the uh, type of database we're gonna be making. Um, so gonna stick with standard create and you're choosing the database engine right here I'm gonna stick with the default Postgres and in terms of the templates right here because we're trying to keep this on the free tier to not get billed for it we'll stick with the free tier templates you'll note how they just took away our ability to have higher availability and durability with the multi AZ stuff um, and that's because it would basically be spinning up additional instances in uh, different AZs that you have copies of your data but on the free tier this is really just to play around and learn with stuff so we're not gonna be doing that um, and it doesn't let us choose it also, which is great. Uh, and now in terms of the settings here, we're going to uh, give a name to our database instance. And so I'm gonna call this one my DB instance, very original. Um, and then we're gonna give this thing a master username. Make sure you remember this username because it will be important for when we connect to it later on. And then in terms of a master password, I'm going to give you one guess at what my password is. Uh, so basically we're just going to enter this into our database and make sure you remember your master password as well. Um, and in terms of the instance itself, so this is the underlying computer, the memory and the processor, they're gonna be running our particular database. And in our case, uh, they're defaulting us to this db.t3 micro. So we've got two CPUs and one gig of RAM, and this will be free for us uh, included in that free tier. Um, so we're going to stick with that, which is great. In terms of storage, um, you have to stay with uh, the GP2, the general purpose 2 SSD to stay on the free tier. If you start trying other stuff, you can get billed for it. So make sure to just stick with the defaults on this. And then you are allocated 20 gigabytes for free in your database on the free tier. Uh, and they do default to check this box for auto scaling. So basically, you know, let's say you just got in millions of additional records and now you need more space. If you have this feature enabled, it will automatically scale up your database uh, to handle that. But in our case, just being careful to not get billed for this thing, we're going to uncheck it. And 20 gigs is the minimum amount for this uh, database that we're gonna be creating, or our RDS. Um, and in our case, I'm gonna stick with the default VPC that we have associated with this AWS account. I'm also gonna keep the subnet group as default. And then in our case, because we're gonna to wanna to be able to connect to this database from another computer or from this computer, um, I'm going to select yes for public access. And I'm just gonna stick with the existing VPC and the default security group for this VPC. Um, and we're not gonna have any preference for AZ, but if you did, you can specify that in here. Um, and then additional configuration stuff, uh, we're literally specifying the port, which in the case of Postgres engine, uh, it will be 5432, um, but you can change this if you want. Um, and to make it easier for us to connect to this thing, we're only gonna be doing password authentication, but you can also include IAM authentication and Kerberos uh, authentication, but we're not gonna do that just for learning this stuff. Uh, and then additional stuff, uh, you give this thing an initial database name. This is a very important thing to do because otherwise we will not have a uh, database present. So we wanna type in a name. So I'll call this initial <laughs> DB um, and uh, we'll just leave it at that. And then um, in our case, you can also have backups created of your database if you have very sensitive data. Um, I am not, we're literally playing around with this so I'm not gonna be doing backups, but if you did, you would check that box and configure it to your heart's content. Um, enabling encryption is recommended for security and we're just gonna leave it. Uh, and then performance insights, these are things that are actually included for you on the free tier. Um, and if you wanted to have more duration of data to look at, you can pay for it and not be on the free tier anymore. So we'll keep it on just to see what that looks like for us. Uh, in terms of monitoring, um, I'm not gonna enable this because we're trying to stay cheap here. Uh, and then in terms of maintenance, um, we're just gonna leave everything else here as default. And they're pretty cool uh, telling you your estimated monthly costs. So basically, um, these are the details of uh, our free tier instance. And now we will just click on create. And one thing I will make note of is that creating these RDS databases 
uh, does take quite a while and obviously they saw that my very generic password has been used in a breach before so uh, just promise you don't tell anyone <laughs> and um, we're going to give this thing a few minutes to finish spinning up and we'll come back to it uh, while that's happening uh, and also while this thing's going another thing I want to make note of is that in order to connect to our database if you're on a Windows or a Mac or an Ubuntu machine or whatever um, there is this nice little client here called SQLtron um, and you can Google them. Uh, I'll paste in a link right here uh, and I'll include one in the description, but basically very simple just service uh, to give us a little thing. I downloaded the executable for Windows. If you're on Mac, you download the DMG. Um, and so once our database comes up online, uh, we will be able to go through the steps of actually connecting to it. So we'll come back to the actual when we get there. Alrighty, and so after about five minutes, uh, the RDS data uh, is now online for us, so that's great. And what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, click on your DB identifier, so the MyDB instance thing, and make sure that you look at its endpoint. So in our case, we're gonna make sure we copy this particular endpoint and um, just save this for later. So I'm gonna paste this on a little notepad I have. And then we're also gonna need to make sure that we remember this port uh, right there. And then also if you completely forgot what your master username was if you click on the configuration tab you can see exactly what you know the initial db name is as well as the master username uh, like that so um, now what we're going to do is we're going to actually connect to this guy that aws is hosting for us so we're going to open up the sqltron installer that we have and this is the default home page i don't have anything here yet so we're going to click on add and in terms of the name you know we'll just call this the my db literally call it whatever you like um, and then in terms of the database type, we chose to go with a Postgres uh, engine. So that's what we're gonna put in here. If you did something else, obviously you put that there. In terms of the server address, this is going to be that endpoint that AWS told us. You can see that 5432 is a uh, default for uh, Postgres. So we're gonna keep that where it is. And then also in terms of the user and the password, this is where we're going to put in the credentials, that master user that we created, which was conveniently called Postgres, and then also the password, which uh, you know we, we know what that is. Um, and then finally, uh, what we're gonna do here is we're going to uh, give it the initial database name. And in our case, we called it like uh, initial DB. And uh, that is all we need for this. And then if you click on this blue test button right here, it'll hopefully tell us that this thing is good. So give it a second. So we're getting a timeout right now. And um, so when you get network timeouts like this, uh, what you wanna make sure of is that you have configured your security groups correctly. So in my case, I'm going to minimize this window. We're going to go back to the RDS dashboard in AWS. And it's because I forgot to do something, which is configuring my security group appropriately. So in our case, remember port 5432 because that is the port that our instance is listening on. So we're gonna click on this uh, default security group that was created for us and i'm going to look at the inbound rules right here and um, what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on edit inbound rules i'm going to add a rule uh, allow custom tcp traffic port 5432 and we're basically going to allow it to come from any ipv4 address i'm going to add another custom tcp rule again port 5432 and then we're going to allow it to come from any ip6 address IPv6, we're gonna click on save rules. I'm gonna give this thing a second to propagate. And um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the RDS page that we were on where we were looking at this database instance. And we can see that this thing is running it online, but we're just having a hard time connecting to it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up SQLtron. We're again gonna try connecting to this guy. And it's telling us that this initial DB database uh, does not exist so let me just confirm here that i've named my initial i had a typo which is the whole reason why it's not connecting so what we're going to do is we're going to paste in the typoed name um, and we're going to again test this and what we're going to see is that this thing is now successfully connected and i'm going to save this and what i'm going to do next is now we can actually connect to this thing so our test was successful we're going to connect to it and we are going to now perform the following. So we're gonna start out by just making a table, and this is literally just playing around at this point. We're gonna execute this command. You can see it successfully makes the table, um, and then we're going to insert some lines into this table. 
Um, and these are all stuff that you can copy paste off somewhere else on the internet. Um, but we're just pasting in some values into our table to show that our uh, hosted database in AWS is actually working as expected. And then um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run some additional commands just to see like we're actually getting results back. So we can see that we're seeing those two uh, data entries we just added. And then finally, uh, when we're done with all this stuff, we can drop our table to just delete everything by just doing drop table links, which is our table name. And so that is how simple and easy it is to get up and started with a hosted AWS database for us in RDS and we're using the Postgres uh, engine. Um, so that's pretty cool. So I'm going to press this little power button here to disconnect from my database. I'm just gonna close out the SQL Tron at this point. And now what we're gonna to do to make sure we don't get billed for any of this stuff like a year or two from now if we forget is we're going to go to the databases section of RDS and then I'm going to click on this guy and click on actions and then click on delete. And uh, I do not wanna create a final snapshot so I'm gonna uncheck this box and then say, I know that I'm gonna lose everything and we're just going to type delete me into this box hit delete and deleting this database will take some time to complete. So we're just gonna let this thing do its thing. But basically that is how you can get up and started with playing around with hosted databases in RDS with AWS. I hope this is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you guys next time.